Hey guys, we're back. And I'm going to show you now how to import those models that we had earlier in Maya. And now that we've done a quick update of our UI elements and added all the stuff that we wanted that we use a lot, um, you'll probably end up adding more as you go along simply because you'll find out which tools you actually use the most and which ones are the most useful to you. One way we can make that really nice and easy is just by adding Enable Customize to our menu. So you can turn that on and off whenever you want and easily add items all the time. So let's just leave that up there and perhaps throughout this demo I'll be adding a few more tools to my UI. <coughs> so first of all I'm going to import the bake plane that we had created earlier. So I'm going to go to my desktop where I saved it, the tiling texture folder, and we want to import the bake plane, not the sculpting plane right now, because in order for ZBrush to know how large our tiling is, um, basically where the texture starts and where it ends, it needs to be the exact size of this tiling UV plane right here that we created. I'll show you what you mean what I mean in a second. So we'll open this up <clears throat> and now we have our tiling plane here in the scene. Then the next thing we're gonna do uh, and oh, so what I had mentioned was basically this tiling plane fits our 1024 by 1024 texture perfectly. So when we're going to start tiling, ZBrush now knows where the, the edges are, where it's going to start to tile and where it's going to end its tile at. So we're going to go into our subtools here and duplicate this subtool that we have. So we'll go ahead now and select the top subtool here and select import again then now we'll go ahead and import our sculpting plane so we'll open that up so underneath is now our bake plane so I'll hide this sculpting plane and above it now is our sculpting plane and if I zoom out here really quickly you can see that behind it is our bake plane there really nicely that's the size of our texture and on the top here is our sculpting plane that we're actually going to be sculpting on top of. Just to show you that this is the files that we had from Maya, I'm going to turn on the wireframe mode. Hmm, it's not showing up for some reason. Uh, let me, oh, I didn't have the right subtool active. So now that the sculpting plane is active, you can see that this is the nice tessellated geo for our texture right here in the center so that where our actual tiling texture is going to be has the most amount of geometry and slowly fading off to the sides from there is less and less geometry. The next thing we're going to want to do is just for purposes of this demo um, I'm just going to go ahead and start dividing right now up, up front. Normally you'll divide based off of how much detail you want at the time but just really quickly here I'm going to turn off smooth so that when we divide it it's simply adding geometry to it so I'll show you that now we have a lot more geo in here so our sculpt will be a lot smoother if I had smooth on though I'll go ahead and undo this and if I had smooth turned on when I divide this is going to actually start smoothing off our borders along the sides here and we will not get that perfect 1024 hard edge tiling texture that we're looking for and that's going to create some issues in the long run. It's not too bad right now, it's, it's pretty similar to the original but it still isn't perfect. So I like to turn smooth off when I do this. I'm going to go back, uh, F to focus. 
So now I'll turn smooth off and just divide it a few times. Okay, I'll turn off this uh, edge frame for now. And what we want to do is now make sure perspective is not turned on. Otherwise, your frame is not going to fit properly for your tiling texture. I'll show you what I mean. So let's select our bake plane. And now we can focus on it. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so that it fits inside of our, our frame here at the top. And if I turn off the sculpting plane on top, then our bake plane is directly underneath it. So unfortunately I didn't have this snapped, so I'm going to hold shift and snap it so that it's facing directly towards the camera. And then I'll focus on it again, so push F and now it's covering the whole frame here. I'll go back to our sculpting plane and now when we sculpt on top of this, it's going to be fitting directly on top of our bake plane. So now if I zoom out, you'll see it was directly on top of there. And we just view that again. And now it's directly in the middle, right where we want it. And this is going to be great for when we want it to tile properly. So let's go ahead and undo that. Now the next part here is actually making sure that when you sculpt, it's going to tile from this side and then start back on this side. Unfortunately, brushes are not automatically set up to tile when you first start sculpting with them. So what you have to do is go up to brush here at the top and then where are we at? Wrap mode. <laughs> it's funny because I'm so used to actually having my own custom menu here but I want to show you guys where this wrap mode is right there because we want our textures to wrap around basically at one. So let me find here where's wrap mode. Curve dab, clay build up. Here we go. Yeah, I had it right there already, of course. So we'll turn the wrap mode to one. And then now as we go across the edge here, it starts coming back on the other side and wrapping perfectly around the texture. Just like we want it to. So there we go. Um, from here now, you can, oh, I have perspective on, so you'll notice that was the issue. So you see when I cross the edge here, it should already be coming onto the other side, but because I have perspective turned on, the the way that this sculpt plane is showing up is slightly distorted because of the perspective. We need an orthographic view in order for it to perfectly align with the bake plane underneath. So I'm going to turn perspective off and now you see it wasn't actually crossing the edge there. I'm going to undo this and now as we cross the edge it should perfectly tile onto the other side just like that. There we go. Excellent. And so now you can, as you sculpt, it will tile excellently in all directions and just wrap all around this whole thing. Let me zoom out a little bit for you so you can actually see what's happening with the sculpt plane here. I'll turn this back on. So as we sculpt, you can see that it's tiling right here along the highly tessellated section that we have and slowly gets less and less tessellated as we get to the outside of our frame. And the reason this is important is because if you're sculpting really hard on these edges, you'll see it starts to deform and warp a bit. And if we had just had just this section here, then our edge, our edge of our texture um, would not get the proper tiling that we want when we end up trying to bake it onto our frame here. Because you'll see, let me go ahead and go back into here, this is the sorting off the, off the borders of our texture and it wouldn't show up anymore. So luckily we have that large sculpt plane on top 
that allows us to go crazy and do whatever we want with these edges and it'll still tile perfectly when we bring this into whatever texturing program we're going to use later. Now I'll turn this poly frame off here. I'll select the bake frame again, focus in on that, and here's our texture. Um, now that we have this nice tiling texture subtool set up here, or Z tool set up, we can just save this out so that you can load it in every time. Uh, that way you don't have to bring this in separately each time and cause yourself the headache of doing all this extra work because nobody likes extra work, especially artists. So <laughs> let's go ahead and at the top here, after you have your sculpting and bake plane tool selected, just click save as and this is how you save out your subtool uh, or your Z tool, sorry and just name it whatever you'd like, tiling texture plane, uh, sculpting plane, tiling texture, um, wabba zabba, bim bam ba doo, anything you want to name it and load it in simply by going to load tool here, selecting it and open and then you can load up your tool every time nice and quick and easy. You may want to have uh, shortcuts on the left here too I like to just have a ZBrush one, so I just click ZBrush and it has all my quick files here at the bottom um, and then any files that I just rarely use or don't use as often in my folder setup here. That's just another little tip for you because it definitely speeds up the process, not having to find all your files every time, just put them in your favorites here, bam. Uh, the next thing I wanted to show you guys is going to be in a different section just because I want to break this up to make it easy for you to watch whatever you want to learn. So in the next section I'm going to show you a bit about creating brush alphas, creating cool things like this so you can just drag out all your alphas however you want them, uh, adjusting the edges of your alphas, uh, adding subtools similar to what we did before and different ways to do that uh, and then some really simp re simple retopology tools like the DynaMesh and the Z Remesher. And then after I cover those things we'll actually really get into creating this texture that we have with the snow and the nice foresty ground and I'll be covering everything that I've already showed you but in a lot more detail and a lot more in-depth and making it nice and fun for you. You'll be a pro by the time you're done. Years later. <laughs> you gotta keep doing it. Keep doing it. Okay, so thanks for watching this video guys and let's move on to the next section now.